Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike. My name is Factually, Contractually and Prehistorically Mike. Today we're talking about something caps lock on very important to me, Lady Gaga's third studio album, Art Pop. You're not gonna get the song the first time you hear it. After the second and third time, you're gonna be like, whoa, what is this? Art Pop is my most streamed album. I've listened to tracks on Art Pop over 1500 times over the last three years. And for context, here are my most streamed albums for the last 365 days. And yeah, I know there are some explosive levels of taste present here in this screenshot. And it would scare some people and there have been people that were scared. I mean, look through history. So in this video, we're going to be deep diving Art Pop in terms of the songs, the music videos, the reception and chart performance, and just the Art Pop era in general. Yes! Yes, Gaga, you look so good! I had an idea to do a video like this for all of my favorite albums from my favorite pop girls. So of course I had to start with my number one, but other albums that I'm thinking of covering are Reputation, Blackout, XCX world. The list truly goes on and that's the scary thing. Now to get this out of the way early, Lady Gaga, I know you're watching this. Can you please add a Chromatica ball date for Australia? I will actually combust if you do so. Actually, one more thing, Stephanie, I have a bone to pick with you. I don't remember art pop. Are you having a laugh? No. Are you having a giggle? A chuckle perhaps? I potentially could be, yeah. Look, I personally like to participate in the occasional lie. Sue me. And lying's very trendy right now, but it wasn't in 2019. So I don't know what you were up to. Alrighty, let's get started. Art Pop was released November 11, 2013, and in the Gaga chronology, it sits between Born This Way and Cheek to Cheek. Technically, it goes Born This Way, Born This Way Remix Album, Born This Way Compilation Album, A Very Gaga Holiday, and then Art Pop, but we're saying it's her third studio album because we're saying that the Fame Monster was an extended play. There were originally 15 songs on Art Pop, Aura, Venus, GUI, <laughs> can't say that because YouTube's gonna get mad at me, Jules and Huh, <laughs> featuring T.I., Too Short and Twister, Manic Cure, do what you want featuring R. Kelly, Art Pop, Swine, Donatella, Fashion, Mary Jane Holland, Dope, Gypsy, and Applause. In 2019, Do What You Want featuring R. Kelly was taken off the album because R. Kelly is crusty, so all further reissues only have 14 tracks. My Art Pop vinyl is one of those reissues, but I really want to get one of the original ones, which is like blue, because I love to collect things because I'm a bird. I collect things to signify dominance and scare off intruders. There also exists a version of Do What You Want featuring Christina Aguilera, but we'll talk about that when we get to that. So the art pop era, oh my God, I'm so excited to talk about this, you don't understand. On August 3, 2012, Gaga posted this photo in which she announced the album title via tattoo. Absolutely iconic, that is very much art pop behavior, even though she'd been doing that for all the other albums before art pop, it's still art pop behavior, argue with the wall. This was a full year before the actual album was released, and I wouldn't say that this picture was the start of the art pop era, if we're saying that eras are the album rollout. So then I would say the era started July, 2013. Album cycle wise, she announces the release date, July 11, 2013. And then we'll say that the era ends in November 2014 with the last Art Rave show. Art Rave or the Art Pop Ball was the name of the tour that went along with the album. Now Art Pop was supposed to be released early 2013, but Lady Gaga very badly injured her hip on the Born This Way Ball tour, which is why we have that much later post-surgery November release timeline. The first single Applause was announced July 23 for an August 19th release, but because of leaks was released one week earlier on August 12th. Speaking of leaks in August, a demo of track one Aura was leaked on online August 5th by da -da 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 Lady Gaga herself. Yes, apparently Lady Gaga's vision for the art pop album rollout was to have track one aura be the first single, track two be the second single, etc. because she wanted the album to be consumed from start to finish. But her label Interscope Records decided that Applause would be better off as the lead single because it was more commercial. Gaga then apparently uploaded a recording of Aura to SoundCloud and made an account on Gaga Daily called Boris Is Here and leaked the recording. For context, Gaga Daily is a really big fan site. They also have a TikTok account that follows Lady Gaga and a few other really cool and talented individuals. Hmm. Interesting. So Gaga anonymously uploads the leak to Gaga Daily. The mods block the account for sharing leaks. The leak spreads around the internet. What? 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 what happened? And then we find out ages later during the Art Rave tour, during a meet and greet backstage, Gaga tells her fans that she was the one that uploaded the leak because she was pissed at Interscope. That is so legendary. Now the leaked version is not the final version that ends up on the album. In the context of this discussion, we're talking about three versions. There's the original Aura demo in 2012, which is called Burka. I'll talk about that in a second. Then we have the version that Gaga leaked and then the final version. The version that Gaga leaked was a lot more aggressive. I'm not a wandering slave. I am a woman. 
which is also part of the reason why Interscope didn't want to make Aura the lead single because they thought it was too much. It was too aggressive, not commercial enough. It also ties into Art Pop Act 2 because initially Lady Gaga wanted to have Act 1 and Act 2 Act 1 having the commercial songs, Act 2 having the more experimental songs. We'll talk about that later though. Don't even worry about it. Like literally stop worrying. What? Like, what is your problem? Aura the song was originally the demo called Burka, which leaked in 2012. Behind the burka. Lyrically, there are a bunch of differences. So for example, in the Burka demo, in the intro, she says, I killed my boyfriend and left him in a trunk on Highway 10. But in the final version of Aura, she says, I killed my former and left her in a trunk on Highway 10. And then almost every use of Aura was originally Burka, which makes some of the other lyrics make more sense. My veil is protection for the gorgeousness of my face. Do you want to peek underneath the cover? Do you want to see the girl who lives behind the aura? So previously it was behind the burqa. Also by changing the intro lyrics from boyfriend to former, she's kind of talking about rebirth in a sense of killing the old version of herself, but you can also interpret it as a continuation of the telephone music video. Remember the telephone music video ended with Lady Gaga and Beyonce escaping in a car through the desert. We did it, honeybee. Now let's go far, far away from here. So if Aura got a music video, it could have been the last part in that paparazzi telephone trilogy. It could have started with Lady Gaga, Beyonce, sticking her in the car. I killed my former partner, left her in the trunk on Highway 10. What could have been, babe? What could have been? So what did Miss Steph herself have to say about this song? These veils, they are really just protecting me from the thing that I held the most sacred, which is my creativity. Gaga worked with Infected Mushroom and Zed on producing this track. And I just want to take a second to acknowledge Zed because not only did Mr. Zed produce one of my favorite songs on the album, he produced two more of my favorite songs on the album, GUI and Donatella. Like, sorry, what? Also, Zed has some other absolute bangers, such as 365 with Katy Perry. You'll make that song deserved number one on the Billboard Hot 100. I'm so serious right now. The fact 365 peaked at 86, that's rotten behavior and you should all feel ashamed. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention about Aura before I move on to applause was that it was used to promote the movie Machete Kills, which is based on the character Machete Cortez from fucking Spy Kids. Lady Gaga has a role in this Spy Kids spin-off like murder movie. And guess who has a cameo? Elon Musk. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's why the lyric video for Aura has all this footage from Machete Kills. Do you wanna touch me cause me the lover? It's so 2019 Met Gala, say it with me. Camp. So August 12th comes around and Lady Gaga releases the lead single from Art Pop, Applause. Bitch, I love this song. Also, I'm gonna say that for like every song, so get used to it. But I really do think that Applause is my number one song on the album. It's my favorite song. Number two would be Aura. Number three would be Donatella. I love this song for a few reasons, but I think one of the biggest ones is, I guess, the intention behind it. Lady Gaga wrote it about how the applause of her fans kept her going during the Born This Way Ball tour when she was literally falling apart. When I was on tour and my hip was breaking and I didn't know why because I was smoking up a storm, making sure that I couldn't feel a thing all day long, I realized it was the applause of the fans that really kept me going. But I didn't want to let them down and I just couldn't cancel because the thought of leaving 50,000 kids in the arena just broke my heart. So I went out every night and I played and I played and I played until I just couldn't walk one night. She also explained how she lives for the applause. I live for the applause. Because the applause of her fans lets her know that she's entertained them. And not to act like I'm so Gaga vibes, but I understand what she's saying. I love making these little YouTube videos and at the end of the day, I just want to make something cool that people are going to enjoy. Now lyrically, beyond what I just talked about, mm, 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 the flavor, I love how much spelling there is in this song. Something about spelling in songs, I just love it. You want to know why? Because spelling is fun! In the background of the chorus when she's like A-P-P-L-A-U-S-E. Yeah, that's Grammys to me. And then at the end when we have A-R-T-P-O-P, mm, that's Pulitzer. Like that's Nobel Peace Prize. Peace Prize? Peace Prize? I also love these lyrics from the second verse. One second I'm a coons, suddenly the coons is me. Pop culture was in art now. Art's in pop culture and me. I'm literally Lady Gaga. If you actually think about it, it's kind of scary the similarities between me and Lady Gaga. Like we're literally both Italian. I remember at some point last year, I tweeted those lyrics and someone was like, OMG, why are you tweeting slurs? And I was like, no, that's not. 
Baby, that's about old mate Jeff. Jeff Koons, Wacky Sculpture Artist Guy from the 80s and 90s. He also created the cover artwork of Art Pop, which we'll talk about now. I fucking love the cover art. Oh, it's fantastic. I've pulled this explanation directly from the Lady Gaga fandom wiki, so shout out to the girls at that establishment. The album cover includes a cropped version of The Birth of Venus by Botticelli with the black and white series of photographs of Apollo and Daphne by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. There's Lady Gaga written in pink and Art Pop written in white sprawled across the cover with a blue gazing ball and the sculpture of Gaga by Jeff Koontz. So with old mate Jeff making this statue of Lady Gaga for the album artwork, Lady Gaga is saying one second I'm the artist and then suddenly I'm the artwork. And see the thing is, pop culture was in art. Now art's in pop culture and me. And I've actually always said that. It's a little bit genius vibes. It's a little bit 300 IQ men's a member Reed Richards Professor X like you might not understand it and that's okay. Now let's talk about the blue ball that she's holding. Lady Gaga's blue ball. But I'm mentioning the ball specifically because it was also the artwork for the Art Pop app. Now this, the Art Pop app is the black hole at the center of the Mike's Mike Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. I talked about this in my celebrity apps video that I did about a year ago, but basically the purpose of it was to serve as a companion to the album, which is why they were both released on the same day. Lady Gaga's goal was to release Art Pop as more of a project rather than just an album. And the app was one of the pieces of the project alongside the album. So this was the app description from the app store. Lady Gaga brings you a musical and visual engineering system that combines music, art, fashion, and technology with a new interactive worldwide community the auras. Altering the human experience, we bring art culture into pop in a reverse Warholian expedition. Exploring Gaga's existence as a cultural interface, the user will share in the adrenaline of fame as they build and share their own projects, chat with one another, and watch in real time on a virtual globe as art pop explodes onto the physical and virtual universe at once. Yeah, sure. Look, idea-wise, I think it was great, but there was no way that this app was going to be able to do all of this. The goal was too big, there's too much going on, and unfortunately, Stacey Girls, it is in fact going down. Server-wise. I think the whole building an aura to represent yourself and then the app using these auras to connect people is a cool concept and something that I'd be interested in services like Spotify using. Like a sort of based on your listening behavior, these are some other listeners that we think you would get along with. Actually, no, I take that back. That sounds absolutely terrifying if you actually think about it. Cause you know what would happen? I would get linked to the most diabolical people known to humanity. And then I'd have to confront the fact that an algorithm has decided that these are my people. Technology's gone too far. We must go back, step back. Everyone take one step back, step back, step back. So the app also had other cute things such as Art House, which was basically like a GIF making tool. And it had a chat section and a section to listen to art pop from inside the app. Long story short, the app flopped and was left to die in the wilderness. There were countdowns for new features that would reach zero and nothing would happen. <laughs> if you really think about it, that's art pop. All right, let's go back to applause and talk about the music video. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before, unafraid to reference or not reference, put it in a blender, shit on it, vomit on it, eat it, give birth to it. There is so much going on in this music video. There's so many references to like silent movies and horror movies. There's this quote from one of the directors that I really like. The big idea was really to have her symbolize this moment of her hip breaking. That's why she's sort of holding up her right leg as a trophy and this idea that no matter what it takes, she'll get back on stage. At the end of the day, would we have applause and art pop if Lady Gaga hadn't broken her hip? No, I'm not saying I'm glad she broke her. I'm saying I hope she claimed that surgery as a tax expense because Steph was working. God, what else do I love about this song? The cheering in the background that you can hear is actually a recording of the crowd from one of the Born This Way shows. Also, this is such a good running song. 140 BPM, baby. I wish my gym put this kind of music on, like on the gym TVs and speakers, but I don't know what's happening with them because all they play is like Ellie Golding deep cuts from 2014 and then random Chainsmokers songs just on repeat. It's actually diabolical. Now, chart wise, Applause peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100. It debuted at number six and then it floated up to its peak of number four the following week and then it stayed on the chart for 23 weeks. For context, the three songs that beat it at its peak were Blurred Lines, Raw, and We Can't Stop. Now, there was a bit of drama because Katy Perry's Raw, which was her lead single for Prism, came out the same week as Applause on August 10th. Remember, Applause was supposed to come out on the 19th, but because of leaks, it was released one week earlier on the 12th of August. I don't know if anyone cares about this next bit, but I find this shit super interesting. The 10th was a Saturday and the 12th was a Monday, so Raw had essentially two more tracking days than Applause. Basically, the Billboard tracking week starts on Friday day one and goes to Thursday day seven for sales and streaming, but then the other component is Airplay, which tracks from Monday day four until Sunday day 10, and then these 
these results would be released in the Hot 100 chart on day 12, dated the Saturday of that second week, day 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in our raw versus applause moment, these songs would debut on the chart for the 24th of August, 2013. In my head, I'm like, okay, cool. That means that week, these songs debuted at number one and number six, and then Art Pop moved up to number four the following week. No, applause didn't even crack the chart and Raw debuted at number 85. That is so wild to me. Oh my God, wild, like jungle, like Raw. Hear me roll. Now, because of the lead single, Same Week drama, there were all these articles saying Battle of the Comebacks and who sold more. And we also had this fun tweet from Lady Gaga. Applause didn't debut at number one. Katie is better than her. Hashtag you won't use my mind. I write for the music, not the charts. You know what else we apparently got out of this? Episode four of season five of Glee, a Katie or a Gaga. Thursday, November 7th. Drum roll, please. War is declared. Bring it on, Sue. It is wrong. I'm really not okay with this. It's the Katy Perry's versus the Lady Gaga's. This aired in November 2013 and was apparently inspired by the drama. This whole situation was a pop emergency. Call the police. We have to call the police. A pop music emergency is underway. 911. 911, summon the monster troops. Due to hackers and abundance of low slash high quality leaks, we issue this pop music emergency. Monsters spread the word. Pop music emergency, hashtag zero days to applause. My new single comes out today. 911 spread this message. Like it was serious. Let's talk second single, Do What You Want, featuring R. Kelly. Do what you want. This came out about a week and a half after Gaga revealed the album title and track list. So we're talking mid October, 2013. She initially announced this song as a promo single, but then because of the positive response to the announcement, her and her team decided to pivot and make do what you want. The second single replacing Venus. Also in that tweet, the hashtag you won't use my mind is lyrics from do what you want. So the song comes out, peaks at 13, time goes on. And then in December, 2013, Lady Gaga is announced as a performer on the voice finale. Fans were tweeting at art pop producers asking for or a remix of Do What You Want featuring the voice judge Christina Aguilera. Bada bing bada boom, we get the Christina Aguilera version of Do What You Want performed live on the Voice 2013 finale and then we get the official mastered version released on January 1st, 2014. There's also a solo version floating around of Do What You Want which was used as the base for the Christina Aguilera version. Now as we know, R. Kelly sucks and after Surviving R. Kelly came out in 2018, 2019, Lady Gaga removed Do What You Want from the album. So that version is nowhere on streaming and it was also removed from all future physical versions. Initially I was like, why not just replace the R. Kelly version with the solo version or the Christina Aguilera version? But you'll understand why she totally removed it if you have a look at the lyrics. She starts off by talking about how the media treats her in lyrics like, I feel good, I walk alone, but then I trip over myself and I fall, I stand up and then I'm okay, but then you print some shit that makes me want to scream. I think this is referencing when she fell over in an airport and tabloids made fun of her for it. But then the chorus is like this whole other meaning. You can't stop my voice cause you don't own my life, but do what you want with my body. When you think about that in the context of who was originally featured on the song, yeah, it's not great. So it had to go. Also, there was actually a music video recorded for this single, I think towards the end of November, 2013, but it was never released. That ties into some behind the scenes drama that we'll talk about when we get to the actual album release date. October 27th, we get the first promotional single, Venus, which is track two off Art Pop. Rocket number nine, take off to the planet. I love this song. To the planet. Turn that shit up. Venus. It's inspired by The Birth of Venus by Botticelli, which is in the background of the Art Pop cover and is also referenced in the Applause music video. Aphrodite lady, seashell bikini. Aphrodite lady, seashell bikini, garden panty. Now the thing is, I've actually always said that. I was running around Italy in 2011 yelling Aphrodite Lady Seashell Bikini. Lady Gaga saw me on the street in Italy because we were both in Italy because we we're both Italian. She heard me, she wrote it down. I actually get royalties every time you stream Venus. Now, interestingly, this is the first song that Lady Gaga has produced herself. And what a song to start with is an absolute banger. Now for the for the it samples Zombie Zombie's Rocket Number no. 9. Rocket which samples rocket number nine take off to the planet Venus by Sun Ra. I posted that on my story and some people were replying like, you dummy flop idiot. That's an interpolation, not a sample. Let me live my truth. Lyrically, the song is about doing the nasty. No surprises there. But I want to talk about my favorite part of the song, which is the bridge. Neptune, go. Now, sir, Saturn, Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Uranus. We love the solar system. I'm such space trash, like you don't understand. My master's thesis had a lot to do with space. I'm obsessed with X-Men and those girls spend a lot of time in space. Anyway, I like these lyrics because not only is she serving science lessons, she's also talking about herself through Roman mythology. And she also says, don't you know my ass is famous? Which is fun. 
because it literally is. And it also reminds me of Nicki Minaj saying, bitches ain't popping, Google my ass. Only time you on the net is when you Google my ass. Like, that is so insane. Like you don't, I'm worried that you don't get it. Only time you on the net is when you Google my ass. Like the only time that you are on the internet is when you're looking at pictures of Nicki's ass on the internet. Not because you yourself are doing numbers making ripples, because you're not, that's the thing. November 4, we get the second promotional single, Dope, which was track 13 in the original track listing. I need it more. The song itself and the meaning behind it are kind of sad. In interviews, Gaga was saying how the song is about her relationship with her fans, but also her struggles with addiction, especially after the Born This Way tour with the hip surgery. It was also originally called I Wanna Be With You. Me personally, it's not my favorite song on the album, but that's because I prefer pump up high energy tracks rather than slower tracks. Interestingly though, Dope ended up charting higher than Do What You Want and GUI, which was singles two and three, even though Dope was only a promotional single. Now I did some research and apparently according to Gaga Daily, this is because Gaga performed at the YouTube Music Awards and for each Vivo video, a commercial played featuring her performance, which counted towards streaming. Remember around that time of YouTube when you would go on YouTube to watch a Vivo music video because everyone was Vivo back in the day. And then the ad at the start was sometimes another Vivo music video or it was a performance video. I don't think this can happen anymore in terms of ads counting as streams. And I also think the formula for calculating the chart was very different then to what it is now. Like I know that in 2013, Billboard updated the formula to focus more on YouTube by including video streams with probably one of the biggest examples being Harlem Shake, which debuted at number one because of this change in February, 2013. And this was all in the same year. So this would kind of explain why Dope got to number eight. November 11, Art Pop the album is released, as is Art Pop the app, same day. The day before, on November 10th, we have the Art Rave launch party, during which we have the flying dress fiasco. I did talk about this in my Chaotic Pop Star Moments video, so I'll play a little bit of that. This is basically like a giant drone, and then it's got this like dress belt attached to it. So I think calling it a flying dress is maybe the reach of the century. And the fact that it looks like it goes about 50 centimeters off the ground, it's sick and twisted. Come on, Gaga. You better float. Give the girls what they're looking for. Little monsters were in the trenches. That is a drone with a dress belt. So at that launch event, we had the flying dress called Volantis. We had the art pop sculpture reveal and a presentation about the app. Now, who was our art rave? Let me tell you three names and you're gonna be like, okay, now I understand who the target audience is. Darren Chris, Kristen Wig, and Haim. Colossal slay, tectonic slay. This is one of the outfits that Gaga wore to the art rave. It's just like, <sighs> all the art pop era outfits are legendary. I kind of get the same vibes as Nikki's Harajuku Barbie era. The fact that I didn't see the art rave tour don't even talk, don't even look at me. I've never seen Lady Gaga in concert. <laughs> It's bad. And yet, where are the Chromatica Ball Australia dates? No one's coming to Australia. I've been counting down to the Dua Lipa concert since I bought those tickets like nine months ago on Earthquake Day. Yes, there was an earthquake on Dua Lipa tickets day and I was more worried about getting the tickets than the actual earthquake. November 16th, Lady Gaga appears on SNL as both the host and the musical guest. I'm mentioning this because there was a skit where Lady Gaga was pretending to be an Apple employee for customers Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. And reading this blew my mind because I cannot compute that Kim and Kanye were a thing before Art Pop came out. Like Northwest was literally born before Art Pop came out. What? At the start of November, the album rollout's in full swing. And then Lady Gaga's manager of six years, Troy Carter, parts ways with Team Gaga. The behind the scenes of the art pop era is actually like an absolute mess. Like there are a bunch of quotes from Lady Gaga about how they were kind of left to fend for themselves at the last second. So that's why some things got delayed, a lot of things got shifted around and some music videos never happened. This is from Lady Gaga talking about the do what you want music video. It is late because just like with the applause video, unfortunately, I was given a week to plan and execute it. Those who have betrayed me gravely mismanaged my time and health and left me on my own to damage control any problems that ensued as a result. The basic summary of what I was getting from reading these interviews is that Lady Gaga and the skeleton team left over were absolutely scrambling to get this album out. So the album came out and we'll talk about chart performance and critic reception in a bit. But I first wanted to talk about the last single released of art pop, GUI, which stands for Girl Under You. It's another song about doing the nasty. Touch me, touch me, don't be sweet. Love me, love me, please retweet, okay me. Let me be the girl under you that makes you cry. I wanna be that G-U-I. I would say for me, this song is a solid fourth or fifth in terms of favorites. And I think my favorite part of the song is at the end where she's counting down in German and she says 18, 16, 14, freedom. 
Like, why? It's definitely a solid pop song. I don't know if I would have picked it as the third single. I personally would have picked Donatella, which probably would not have been a good decision commercially. I just love that song and I'm not sorry about it. So GUI impacted US radio in April 2014 and we got the music video GUI an art pop film around March 27th. The original version of the music video is almost 12 minutes long and then the broadcast edit is four minutes long and the original 12 minute version actually has four songs from art pop in it. So we'll go through and as we get to each song, we'll talk about it. The first section is the title track art pop and we see Lady Gaga as a mythical creature with wings that has been shot with an arrow. Now this track Gaga also refers to as the swan song and it was actually the first song that she wrote for the album. In interviews, she said that she wrote the song to be the center of the record and it's true, like it's literally track eight of 15. She also said, it's really a metaphor for love between me and my fans. If we can belong together, then maybe art and pop can belong together in that order. I would say my favorite lyrics would be the pre-chorus where she says, my art pop could mean anything. And then we have that iconic outro where she says, free my mind, art pop, you make my heart stop. Literally. I like the first quote because she's saying that she wants her fans to draw their own meaning from art pop. And then the free my mind art pop. She's talking about how she herself is using this album art pop to push herself to make something weird and unexpected. So back in the GUI art pop film, the second section is Venus and it has Gaga essentially being brought back to life by going into the Neptune pool. It's a whole thing. What I want to bring your attention to, however, is the inclusion of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Andy Cohen. We have Kyle Richards, Kim Richards, Brandy Glanville, Lisa Vanderpump, and Yolanda Hadid singing and dancing to Venus while Gaga is in the Neptune pool. And then Andy Cohen playing Zeus. Just like the absolute pop culture intersection that is the GUI art pop film. Like some people would be scared and they were and it showed on the charts. The third section is the actual GUI bit and that's the section that ends up in the broadcast edit. I wanna be a G Yes, Gaga, you look so good. There's big sets, there's choreo, there's the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, there's Sky Does Minecraft. Yes, Lady Gaga loves Minecraft. There's also Lego Gaga. There's a scene where Gaga resurrects Jesus, Gandhi, John Lennon, and Michael Jackson. And then the end of the video is her and the housewives breaking into evil businessman headquarters to convert the evil businessman. And that is the definition of slay. Look it up. The credits have the fourth song featured in the video, Manicure, which is styled as Man I Cure. <laughs> Gaga said, this song is about getting ready to go out and catch a man or catch a girl you know to fool around with. You can see this at the start of the song where the lyrics are <coughs> Put some lipstick on, perfume your neck and slip your high heels on. Like that's literally me, are you joking? And then the chorus is, you know, saying that this person who was getting ready to go out has found someone and wants to go home with him. The demo version actually has an extra intro, which is a lot more straightforward. I'm gonna have sex for sure. It also has an extremely iconic bridge, which made me collapse the first time that I heard it. I want expensive things, including diamond rings. I had to go to the ER, there were ambulances involved. making money, looking right. Bling, bling. I would say keep the original version, but add in the intro and the bridge from the demo because we deserve it. So that's everything that was released as a single or featured in the GUI art pop film. Let's go through and take a quick look at the tracks that we haven't talked about yet. Track four, Sex Dreams, and track five, Jewels and Drugs. Can you remember sex I'm just kind of like, oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Like I'm not skipping them, but they're not my favorite. At some point, there was a possibility that Rihanna was going to sing the hook on Sex Dreams. She tweeted in September 2013, just left the studio, recorded a hashtag monster hook for one of my favorite artists. And she also tweeted some lyrics from the song. But as we know, it never eventuated. Track nine, Swine, is like a mega electro pop dubstep moment and I love it. Swine. Lyrically, I'm like, but that build up to that drop, yeah, that's history. It kind of sounds like flicking a plastic ruler between two hard surfaces and then moving the surfaces closer together so that the frequent, like, you know what I mean. Track 10, Donatella is my third favorite song on the album. Zed produced. Donatella. This song is Met Gala. Gaga said that this song is kind of like a love letter to Donatella Versace and I've pulled this quote from the Lady Gaga fandom. Not so much about Donatella as a brand as it is Donatella the person, about me as a person, that idea of what the public wants from you. I am so fat. Check out, I'm blonde, I'm skinny, I'm rich, 
And I'm a little bit of a bitch. This song was made for TikTok. If this was released this year, I'm telling you, it would do absolute numbers. I love the start of this song where it sounds like a drink's being poured, but it sounds really expensive and shiny and like skinny. Zed explain. It has a lot of references to the fashion industry, such as in the pre-chorus where it says, what do you want to wear this spring? What do you think is the new thing? What do you want to wear this season? Which flows nicely into track 11, fashion. fashion. Good and fine. This song was actually produced by Will I Am and David Guetta, and you can actually hear Will I Am on the outro, which is fun. Le monde est moi, la vie. As the title suggests, it's about fashion. And the lyrics are basically talking about how dressing nice makes you feel nice. It's cute, looking good and feeling fine, slay comma slay. The demo for fashion leaked around the same time as a bunch of others in 2017, and I like the album version, but I wish that they kept this section in. Fantastic, chic, freak, slay. Also, I think the instrumental for the demo sounds a lot like the Madagascar 2 soundtrack, which is not as much of an off the wall statement as you think it is because Will I Am made fashion with David Guetta but also worked on the Madagascar 2 soundtrack with Hans Zimmer. Track 12, Mary Jane Holland. It's about Gaga's brown haired alter ego called Mary Jane Holland which comes to life after she does some activities that would get one demonetized. Some smokers involved. The song is good, but even better when you understand this alter ego part because the lyrics make so much more sense. When I ignite the flame and put you in my mouth, the grass eats up my insides and my brunette starts to sprout. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, Mary Jane Harland. The last song that we haven't covered is track 14, Gypsy. This was originally going to be the third single, but was eventually replaced by GUI, which I think was a good decision. This song to me is kind of like, I'm listening because I know that Applause is the song after this and I need just like a little bit chill. It's praise. It's praise before you go to the club. Gaga said that the song is inspired by her finding true love and also about her traveling the world touring and how even though she was going everywhere, she always had a home with her fans. Like it's sweet or whatever. There's also a bunch of references to older songs and some situations that came up during touring, but you can go and read about them, babe. That's on you. So that's Art Pop. A-R-T-P-O-P. And as Gigi Hadid, famous poet Gigi Hadid once said in 2022, Big Slay. There's so many more things that happened in this era, but let me mention a few of them. Art pop in space. Lady Gaga was supposed to perform in space, but the aircraft that she was going to be performing on exploded during a test flight. There was this performance of Dope where someone in the crowd sounded like Toad from Mario. We had the 2013 Lady Gaga and the Muppets Holiday Spectacular, which had a performance of fashion with RuPaul. And they actually sing the demo bridge as well. Also, the Muppets Holiday Spectacular is genuinely fantastic. And someone uploaded the full thing on YouTube so you can go and watch it. Disney, stop being boring and upload a high quality version on Disney+. Plus. What are you doing? So now let's talk about album charts and reception. Singles wise, we had Applause peaking at 4, Dope at 8, Do What You Want at 13, Venus at 32, and GUI at 76. The album itself debuted at number 1 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart and was Lady Gaga's second album to do so. That's a big deal. A number one debut for an album is huge. Now, critically, the album did not slay. Crime, prison, felony. Let's have a look at some of these reviews. Here's a nice one from Billboard. Coherently channeling R&B, techno, disco, and rock music as a pop artist while discussing eh, eh, lust, God, fame, and creativity, Lady Gaga has offered fans her most sonically and lyrically diverse album to date. And here's a flop review from Consequence. That refusal to experiment as wildly as she once did reads as fear and a pop star who's afraid to end up sounding like the once weird Lady Gaga does on art pop. Boring and normal. Are you dumb? Art pop doesn't sound experimental. It sounds boring. It sounds normal. Did you even listen to it? Question mark, question mark. Critics just be saying shit, I swear to God. This review from Clash Music is probably the best representation of the general reception. Not a great pop album, but certainly the product of a great pop star. That seemed to be like an overall theme of the professional art pop discourse. We like Lady Gaga, but we don't like art pop. If I've learned anything from these pop culture deep dives into movies, TV, and music, is that when it comes to fun stuff, old crusties hardly ever right and frequently wrong. Did I lie? No. In terms of the album gaining popularity all these years later, the general discourse seems to be 
art pop was ahead of its time. And I absolutely agree with that. I posted a poll on my Instagram story for people to pick between those two main pop girl singles that were released that same week in 2013, Raw and Applause. The overwhelming majority picked Applause as the better song. And that's not to say that I think that Raw is a bad song. Absolutely not. I love that song. And it's interesting because everyone's like, oh, Applause is a better song, but that's not what happened chart wise and critics wise and sales wise. I think that Raw is a good pop song and it's an especially good 2013 pop song. Whereas to me, Applause does not sound like a 2013 pop song. I do believe that if Applause and Art Pop came out in 2022, it would smash. Yes, some of the lyrics would probably be a bit dated, but the production, like it sounds like something that I would listen to now. So my opinion is I think Art Pop is aging really well. I think it will become more and more popular and I'm interested to see what that will mean charts wise. There was actually talk of an Art Pop Act 2. In October 2013, Gaga mentioned that she had all these extra songs ready to go for Act 2 and that she wanted commercial songs in Act 1 and experimental songs in Act 2. Remember that aura discourse? In 2021, DJ White Shadow said that he found 40 more finished songs on his art pop computer. Give it to me now. There was also a petition for Lady Gaga to put out Art Pop Act 2 and she put out a statement saying that Art Pop was a tough era for her. Making this album was like heart surgery. I was desperate, in pain, and poured my heart into electronic music that slammed harder than any drug I could find. Thank you for celebrating something that once felt like destruction. We always believed it was ahead of its time. Years later turns out, sometimes artists know and so do little monsters, paws up. Now one thing about me, yes, Gaga. I'm gonna put my paws up. In terms of songs that I've seen floating around that were either scrapped from Art Pop or could have potentially ended up on Art Pop Act 2, there's Nothing On But The Radio, the radio. Brooklyn Nights, Cake Like Lady Gaga, Party Nauseous, Ratchet, T, Temple, Onion Girl, and some others. Nothing On But The Radio is such a good fucking song. Oh my God. In January of this year, there was a leak of Addison Rae singing it, potentially for her upcoming EP. And in my opinion, it sounded really good. I'm an Addison Rae main pop girl agenda pusher. Stream, I got it bad. I think Ratchet was going to have Azalea Banks on it, which would have been huge. DJ White Shadow actually released the instrumental for Ratchet. So you can go stream that if you want to. I think there was also another Azalea song called Red Flame, but I can't remember if that was Azalea feet Lady Gaga or Lady Gaga feet Azalea. In summary, Lady Gaga, give me the Art Pop Act 2 hard drive right now. But yes, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say about Art Pop and the Art Pop era. I absolutely loved deep diving this. I'm not even sure if anyone's going to watch this, but if you did, I hope you found it interesting and I hope it inspired you to go stream Art Pop. Feel free to leave me a like and a comment, blah, blah, blah. Thank you all so much for watching and remember at the end of the day, A-R-T-P-O-P. -P.